Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the untrippable circuit breaker. It looks the part, it's marked the part. This is apparently a 6 amp type C circuit breaker. It even feels the part, but it's not the part. And this was sent for our entertainment by Dave, who got it as part of a generator. He fixed the generator up. Part of that was removing this. He thought it felt a bit light for a circuit breaker. He opened it up and then sent it to me so we could take it apart for entertainment. So let me just separate one of the modules and we'll just compare to what we're expecting inside a typical circuit breaker here. So I'll zoom down in this. What we're expecting in a circuit breaker is a fairly complex trip mechanism involving a coil. Now this is supposedly a type C circuit breaker, so it should be rated to handle the current of six amps uh, continuously, but when it exceeds a certain amount, it will either trip it magne uh, magnetically or thermally. If it's a very high current uh, overload, of between five to 10 times, that's between 30 to 60 amps. It will activate this little sonoid in here, which will pull a plunger up and it'll smack the release mechanism and it'll trip. If it's a simmering overload, say for instance, 10 amps, uh, that's not enough to trip it magnetically, the bimetallic strip in here will gradually heat up until it touches the trip mechanism. When it does that, once again, click, it trips the mechanism. When it does trip the mechanism, the contacts open under this little arc shield here. And when that happens, the arc is drawn up into these plates, which then quench the arc and safely break the circuit. Let's see what's inside this one, shall we? Not much. So what we have in here is air. We have a steel contact, which just looks like pressed steel. We have a latching mechanism, which is very convincing. There's a wee spring on the plunger here. It's got this little cantilever, and when you go beyond the midpoint in that, it just pushes the plastic a bit, and then it just latches. It just goes over the midpoint, and that's what holds it in this sort of latch position. When it does that, it gently opens and closes that contact, which has no current sensing. Well, apart from this wire might go... Uh, maybe a hundred amps or something like that. It looks quite smoky, it looks quite dark as if it's had a bit of an experience. And the contacts here, the arc quenching is done by luck. If, well, it's never going to, you know, you'd have to actually physically open it under fault because it's not going to trip. And that just kind of shows you what sort of stuff you find these days. Let's open other ones and see if there's any sign of... He said that uh, one of the connections wasn't making. I think it's possible that the, the steel contact was just not really up to the job. It's nothing really burnt, but it was maybe just not actually making contact or, or just pitted at the point of contact or rusted. Very strange. So uh, I can think of a few trades this would be perfect for. General contractors, they, they like to overload circuits. Uh, welders, pro welding professionals also like to overload circuits. Uh, their circuit breakers are always tripping. Uh, millwrights, possibly, for replacing fuses, wire links, and, of course, the ever-favourite unscrupulous landlords using the cheapest labour they can get who also replace fuses with really big fuses or wire links or inappropriate circuit breakers. So that's a perfect solution to that because it means you can install it and it looks as though you're complying with it. I mean, this would never come up in a test. There, there are test devices that you can connect them to a circuit breaker and it will test it at its rated trip current but none of the standard tests in Britain done in homes actually do that. This is where RCDs win because the RCD when you push the button on a real RCD it will actually do that test. But that's interesting. It's a bit freaky to see something marked as a circuit breaker but contain nothing more than a switch. And there is an incident when the electrical supply industry in the UK, the, the distributors, their stock got contaminated some time ago with uh, Square D circuit breakers, fake ones, that were pretty much the same thing again. Air inside apart from a switch, so it looked as though it was working, but didn't offer any protection. So scary stuff. These things can happen, and uh, there's no way to tell other than, well, as Dave found when he took it out and it just felt slightly different. But there you go. Untrippable circuit breakers. It's a miracle of science.